everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I am Jill McKenna. I'm the campaign marketing manager here at Ruby. And I am truly delighted today to be speaking with my friend and colleague, David Lambert, who works with us at Ruby. Uh, David, can you say a little bit about what you do for us and your background? Sure. Um, hi, Jill. So hi. I uh, take on all of the paid media here at Ruby. So I do all of our digital advertising spend, uh, Google Analytics, uh, Google Ads, Facebook Ads. So mostly anything that we do from a paid perspective, I'm involved in one way or the other when it involves marketing and then really trying to tie that into long-term goals and optimization and efficiency. So that's where I spend the majority of my time as well as helping some of our systems uh, connect and talk to each other. So let's say somebody goes and they do all these great advertising efforts and they really make a, make a point to invest um, in, in engaging people and bringing them to their website. What are the biggest mistakes you see when people um, get people to their website and they don't necessarily have a great experience? There is quite a bit there. Um, a lot of it is the initial messaging. Um, it is easy to get you're just trying to cram so much into your website. So you really want to be um, careful of when someone hits your page, what, what's the one message? What's the one thing you want them to do when they're there? Do you want them to click to call you? Do you want them to read a headline of who you are? Um, a big thing in web development is the five second test. If someone hits their page, you know within five seconds who the company is, what they do, why you're there. And that's a really, really strong um, first step that you want them to know, I'm a hairstylist in Chicago and this is my brand. So that, I, oh, I'm in the right place, I'm looking for a hairdresser. But then having the, the, the contact being easy to reach out, that's the next thing. So they're in the right spot, but how do I, how do I connect with you? So there's a couple ways that you do that with, with forms or telephones or emails being listed up but we're also seeing web chat be such a big driver of that where they can directly communicate and i know as younger audiences sometimes we don't like to pick up the phone as much but when we do it's really beneficial so sometimes the bridge of having that low friction of i'm just going to chat to this person to ask a quick question that's been super helpful for many businesses. I know that I do it when I don't want to fill out a big form or go into their email. I just want a quick response. And then that helps me dig into further what that company does or it, it helps put me in this perspective of, no, this might be a service I actually want. It needs to do this or that and I'm not finding it on your website. So it's like, it's, it's kind of replaces some of the search functionality that we've had to do on websites, which is often difficult to get exactly what someone's looking for. So having someone answer directly to your chats, I'm sure that many people have experienced that where it is a much quicker version of, I'm able to find what I'm looking for right off the bat, and then I can decide, do I wanna call, do I wanna pursue this more? But we've seen really good um, results with helping companies utilize that, specifically at Ruby. Yeah, we've seen a lot of rise of chat um, since COVID began. I mean, for a lot of reasons, right? We're in Zoom meetings all day. We don't have time to pick up the phone, but we can get on a website and see, are they open? Do they require masks? Is there a pickup protocol that I need to follow? Um, and, and it seems like so many industries are really embracing that. And, you know, you would never open a store and not have a staff member there. And yeah. that can be the experience when you go to a website and it's like, well, what now? Yeah. Well, it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle of things. If you went into Walmart and there's no signs or no people in there, it would take you forever to find what you're, what you're looking for. And then the signs are helpful, but we've all walked down those large aisles and I just cannot find the sign that says batteries and I'm stuck. I just need, I just want this and I can go. So you flag down someone in a vest and they kind of point you in the right direction. And I, it's very akin to the chat service of, I'm looking, I don't wanna dig through your FAQs, I don't have time, I'm running between meetings, I just want this quick question answered to know if this is gonna work for me or not. And generally those really start to prod out different things that companies wouldn't know about that 
potential customer, whether that is what they're really looking for, the questions they sort of ask. So it helps dig into the perspective of a potential lead for you. So even if they don't convert into a paying customer or they never visit your website again, you can understand the, who the audience is that first was driven there and try to align either your product or service more closely to those results or try to make those messagings more clear. If you get always the same questions, try to bubble that up so that people have that and they, they, you can check that box right away so that they're not having to dig through. Yeah, and I'm curious about um, retargeting. So if for those who don't know, you know, you've, you've definitely experienced retargeting. It's when you look at something online and all of a sudden you're seeing it on every, every web page you go to, it's popping back up, um, trying to get you to look at it again and hopefully buy it. So um, when is retargeting worthwhile? When is maybe it not? And how does somebody start thinking about retargeting for their, for their services or brand? Uh, retargeting is, I would honestly say there is most, lead no situations where retargeting isn't helping you out it is far cheaper than getting someone to click on your site the first time so if i'm running a google search ad and someone clicks and gets to my site that's going to be far more expensive than when i'm following them around for a period of time on the internet with you know some graphic of reminding them hey you checked out our site do you still want the solution so as long as it aligns with your business, I think it always is fruitful, especially when you're not charged unless they click on that banner ad or that retargeting again. Um, and it only helps to keep that conversation going. A big thing with advertising is frequency, how often someone sees, how many times someone sees your brand in general. Because like we were talking about, you're bouncing between meetings and different things and you're trying to purchase all these different things so once you kind of get out of the search mode it, it's on the back burner i might never think about those sunglasses that i actually thought were cool but i was on the fence because i didn't want to spend 50 bucks right now so then i'm going about my day i'm looking at other stuff and then that sunglass picture pops back up and i'm like oh i really do like that maybe i should just purchase it so that's essentially how it works um where you're just putting a pixel on your site, uh, people that visit um, then are put into an audience and you're able to advertise based on their web traffic to other places and kind of follow them around a little bit. Um, so I would say it's, it's super strong. It usually has a better return because um, you're not wasting, you're not, you're utilizing those first web traffic hits and you're trying your best to say, hey, we're still here. And it, especially for someone that's not familiar with your brand at all, they might have searched and found you that one time. You aren't as familiar as you need to be. You need to kind of see and be reminded a few times before you're just gonna go out with this person. So it's kind of like hanging out with someone for the first time. You, you kind of want to see them a couple times and then you're like, oh, we could hang out. It wouldn't be awkward, you know? Yeah, you want to judge how they treat the waiter or the waitress. Yeah, exactly. That's going to inform everything you need yeah. to know.